Hello, welcome to Prince of Peace's video worship for July the 3rd, 2022. This is a communion worship service, so I invite you to gather bread and wine or juice if you don't have them already. Maybe stop the video and make sure that you have what you need as we worship today. We continue this time of worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins and hear the assurance of our forgiveness in Christ. Sometimes, Lord, it just seems to be too much, too much of people devouring each other and the earth. Too much of inhaling pain and exhaling confusion. Sometimes, Lord, it seems to be too little. Too little of compassion, of daring, of persistence. Too little music and laughter and celebration. O oh God, make us bread for the hungry in these starved times, that being bread for others, we also may be fed and made full. And hear these words of forgiveness. The Holy Spirit forgives our sin and brings us together as the body of Christ in the breaking of bread in justice for our hurting world, in Sabbath rest, and in word and promises, alive and ongoing. Amen. Let us pray. O God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are the city that shelters us and the mother who comforts us. With your spirit, accompany us on our life's journey that we may spread your peace in all the world in the strong and gentle name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Halle, halle, halle. First scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 66, beginning at verse 10. Celebrate with Jerusalem. Be happy with her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, so that you may nurse and be satisfied from her comforting breasts that you may drink and be refreshed from her full breasts. The Lord says, look, I am extending prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of nations like an overflowing stream. You will nurse and be carried on the hip and bounced upon the knee. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. In Jerusalem, you will be comforted. When you see this, your heart will rejoice. Your entire being will flourish like grass. The Lord's power will be known among his servants, but his fury among his enemies. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And a reading from the book of Acts. Chapter 17, Paul stood up in the middle of the council on Mars Hill and he said, people of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I was walking through town, 
and carefully observing your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. What you worship as unknown, I now proclaim to you. God, who made the world and everything in it, is Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples made with human hands, nor is God served by human hands as though he needed something, since he is the one who gives life and breath and everything else. From one person, God created every human nation to live on the whole earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their lands. God made the nations so that they would seek him and perhaps even reach out to him and find him. In fact, God isn't far away from any of us. In God, we live and move and exist As some of your own poets said, we are his offspring. Therefore, as God's offspring, we have no need to imagine that the divine being is like gold, silver, or stone image made by human skill or thought. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. When I was a child, probably elementary age, in the church that I attended, we sang a song, and I think we sang it as an acclamation to the gospel reading. We sang it a lot, anyway. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word. We sang it enough that that song, I still can remember and hear the voices of my spiritual elders singing. And it's simple. It's just various biblical names for Jesus. Names are important. Names help to connect us to people. It's really frustrating when someone calls us by the wrong name. I once had a professor in college who for the entire semester called me Annie. That's not my name. So needless to say, I didn't recommend that professor or his classes to other students. In contrast, I really love my dentist's office in part because even the very first time I visited, they pronounced my name correctly. And as somebody who has a name that's commonly pronounced a different way, it made an impression. Names are important. And today we're thinking about God's name. Or rather, we're thinking about God's many names. And the journal prompt for today is what names do you use for God in prayer? If you've got that story journal, pull it out and spend a little time thinking about that question. What names do you use for God in prayer? I asked that question in Bible study this week, and some of the names that people shared Lord, Holy Spirit, Eternal Father, Holy One. What do these names tell us about God? Well, for me, Holy One, which is a name for God I use a lot in prayer, it says something about God being awesome and majestic and powerful and other. Lord, as a name, has to do with power and relationship and who's in control. Eternal Father sounds to me like long-lasting and ever-present. The names that we pray to God with teach us and reflect our relationship with God. 
As our summer of story moves into July, we are shifting our focus from stories about us as we answered questions like, who am I and where are my holy places? What is my name? What fruit of the Spirit has God given to me? In July, we're looking at how God is revealed. And today, exploring the idea that God is revealed to us by God's own name. In the reading from Acts, we read about Paul, the apostle, and he's in Athens, standing up on a hill, speaking to the learned men and the philosophers of the city. He's there to preach the gospel. He said to these men, I can tell, I can tell that the city of Athens is religious. There are temples all over the place. Now, I tell you what, I got to stand on that hill a little bit less than two weeks ago. Now, I'm not sure which direction Paul was standing when he preached, but I started to imagine. And if he was where I was imagining him, at his back was the Agora, with its temple to Hephaestus, and off to his right, down the hill a little bit, a temple to Apollo, and just in front of him, up on the biggest hill, the temple to Athena, the goddess protector of the city, the Parthenon. So here is Paul standing in Athens. I can see that you are very religious. And yet, even here in Athens, Paul said, there is a temple to a God whose name you do not know. And this God, Paul said to them, this God is the only true God. This is the God in whom we live and move and have our existence. And you, he told those Athenians, you just don't know God's name yet. God's name. God revealed the holy name to Moses. I am who I am, God said. The prophet Isaiah, in chapter 66, gave us a name for God. Mother. This is among only a handful of biblical texts that uses a maternal name or image to help us understand God. This text in Isaiah is for a people who were scared and fearful. They wondered things like, where was the goodness of God when there was terrible things going all around? And the prophet Isaiah gives us God who grabs a child and pulls the babe into her lap and bounces it on her knee. Now, a mother should provide for the necessities of a child's life. But as one of our Bible study participants pointed out this week, bouncing a baby on your knee isn't about necessity at all. It's about laughter and joy, about a relationship of love and delight, as much as comfort and security. Ronald Cole Turner wrote that Isaiah 66 is a scripture for people who have had to confront the reality of evil or hatred when a sudden chill of dread comes upon us. Isaiah 66 invites us to rejoice in a mothering God, a mothering God who comforts and who is more powerful than all the evil that this world can bring up. There's been a lot of bad news recently. So I want you to imagine being pulled up into God's lap because you need comfort and solace. But pretty soon you have smiles and laughter as God delights in you, beloved child. Our scriptures give us many names and many metaphors for God. Our beautiful gathering hymn expanded a few of those names. 
I asked you earlier to write down the names for God that you use in prayer. And now I'm going to challenge you. In this week to come, pick a name that you don't typically use in prayer. And try it on. Because I'm curious how changing up the words we use for God, how we address God, how that might impact our prayers, or how we pray. So for me, here's what I'm going to try on this week. I mentioned that I use Holy One often in prayer, kind of this big grandness of God. This week, I'm going to try praying, mothering God, or Abba God, names of intimacy and parenting relationship. And let's check in. Would you send me an email or let me know? How are you praying? What are the names of God that live in your heart? Amen. Let us call upon the name of God in prayer. Heavenly Father, send your church. Send us into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all people. Renew your church as we carry out your mission of healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our helper, upholder of our lives, be with this aching and weary world. Guide the work of those who lead the nations. Let no leaders exalt themselves, but give them hearts to work for the good of all people. And this week, as we observe Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence to work for freedom for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mothering God, you care for all people in need. Nourish the hungry. Grant work that satisfies Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give hope to the despairing, and peace to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With saints of every time and place, O oh God, we lift our prayers to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. In the worship bulletin that accompanies this video worship, there is a link where we invite you to give financial offerings, and we thank you for those. But today I have an ask for a couple of different kinds of offerings. One is to offer a little bit of your time. We are looking for readers of scripture for this video worship so that we can connect with one another even though we're not in the same place. 
You get to do that on your own schedule. So if you're willing to serve as a scripture reader for video worship, please let me know. The other thing we're asking is for your stories. And specifically, the answer to this question, when did God use someone to bless you? To be honest, I'm looking for sermon illustrations. So if you would be willing to share some of those stories this week in the summer of story, or your ability to read, thank you. As we move into this holy meal that Christ gives us, please make sure that you have bread or cracker and wine or juice for each person who wants to participate in this meal. We sing our way to this table using the song, Here is Bread, and Kendra will be joining me as we sing into the meal. juice and hear the promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the crucified and risen Lord, who cradles you and nourishes all the world, keep you from weariness and raise you to live in the comfort of the reign of God. Amen. <laughs>